Some say the world of finance can be split into two time periods, before and after 1952. That was the year Harry Markowitz first published his theory on portfolio selection. Born in Chicago in 1927, Harry M. Markowitz studied economics at the University of Chicago under some of the most brilliant academic minds of the era, such as Nobel laureate Milton Friedman. It was during this time that Markowitz studied portfolio diversification. He demonstrated that by creating an optimum mix of different asset classes, or by not putting all his eggs in one basket, it was possible to reduce risk and increase returns in the overall portfolio. More than 50 years later, his research is still being used by fund managers and institutional investors around the world. In 1990, Professor Markowitz was awarded the Nobel Prize for Economics for his groundbreaking work. Since 1952, Markowitz has taught in a variety of prestigious schools and universities and has held key corporate research and management positions. He has four books in production and delivers keynote speeches to leading financial institutions. And now, Superfund is proud to bring Professor Harry Markowitz to your Superfund office. Hello, everyone. My name is Aaron Smith of Superfund Asset Management. And on behalf of the Superfund group of companies and its founder, Christian Baja, I would like to welcome you to a very special Superfund event featuring a man whose groundbreaking economic theory changed the perceptions of the financial world. As you've just heard in the introductory video, you can divide the history of investing into two periods, before and after 1952. That was the year that an economics student at the University of Chicago published an article for the Journal of Finance called Portfolio Selection. It was a pioneering work about the effects of risk, correlation, and diversification on an investment portfolio. Today, investment advisors, institutions, and other professional investors are using portfolio theory as developed by Harry Markowitz as the foundation of their portfolio construction. Portfolio theory is perhaps the most important development for advisors in the past 50 years, helping them to create portfolios with the highest risk-adjusted returns possible. It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome our guest today, Nobel Laureate, Professor Harry Markowitz. Thank you. Today we have partners, clients, and friends around the globe joining us from Vienna to Chicago, where today we are celebrating the opening of our new investment center. As a reminder, we are taking live questions for Professor Markowitz during this presentation. Simply email them to hm at superfund.com. Professor Markowitz, when you first published your modern portfolio theory, could you have imagined that half a century later it would still be one of the most important and influential economic theories dealing with finance and investment? No. I uh, at the time that I discovered these principles, um, I was trying to get a Ph.D., and I never thought, uh, and, and when I published, uh, I uh, hoped that people would use it, but I never stopped to, to think that, uh, you know, uh, this means that billions of dollars would be managed this way. Well, Professor Markowitz's portfolio theory is at the heart of what Superfund teaches financial advisors and conveys to its clients. We strive to show that managed futures display a low correlation to traditional investments and to other alternative investment strategies. And by adding managed futures to a portfolio, our clients are able to optimize their returns while substantially reducing the overall risk. Now we will receive firsthand insight into this remarkable concept provided by the brilliant researcher who developed the modern portfolio theory. Our guest speaker today, Professor Harry Markowitz. Thank you. My uh, topic today is portfolio theory, who did it first? Uh, it's sometimes said that uh, people didn't know that they were supposed to diversify before uh, 1952, uh, but that's not correct. If you, uh, 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 for example, Shakespeare in The Merchant of Venice has Antonio, the merchant, say, uh, my ventures are not in one bottom trusted nor to one place, nor is my whole estate upon the fortune of the, uh, the, of the present year. Therefore, my merchandise makes me not sad. So he knew about diversification, not only diversification over investments, but diversification across time. Long John Silver in Treasure Island says, uh, I puts it all away, <coughs> some here, some there, 
Uh, none too much anywhere is by reason of suspicion. So even a smart pirate knew that you're supposed to diversify. Uh, what I did was to uh, formulate, formulate uh, this notion of diversification uh, in a mathematical way. Uh, so it was the uh, 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 it was theory, uh, economic theory, financial theory that was left behind a practice. Uh, before uh, 1952, theorists, theorists didn't understand uh, how uh, diversification worked when risks are correlated. And they didn't understand risk return trade-off on the portfolio as a whole. Um, and we can illustrate that by uh, writings by uh, John Burr Williams and uh, uh, and one that's in a writing that's one, one slide back, if we could go one slide back, please. Uh, let's see, there should be somebody back. Yes, and uh, Levins, 1945. Wi uh, Williams is quite famous, and I, kn and I think of him automatically even when I'm uh, <laughs> giving a talk. Levins, I have to look at my uh, chart, but you'll see he's, uh, uh, his contribution on this uh, uh, area is quite interesting. Uh, before we look at this literature and what theorists uh, understood and didn't understand prior to 1952, let's uh, do some uh, terminology. Uh, some of this terminology, uh, many or all of you may already know, but uh, uh, let's make sure that every, we're all on the same page. So standard deviation is a measure of how widely spread out a probability distribution is. Or if you sample from this probability distribution over and over again, uh, standard deviation is a measure of how volatile, how much uh, that uh, the uh, returns uh, or whatever, the, uh, whatever you're sampling from, how much it goes up and down over time. Variance is just the square of standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation has the following intuitive uh, meaning. Uh, the most of any probability distribution is between the average minus two standard deviations and the average plus two standard deviations. Uh, that is not true of variance. It is not true that most of a probability distribution is between the average minus two variances and plus two variances. Uh, the uh, reason why we work with variance is it's just easier to compute things with variance. We work out uh, formulas with variance, and then we take a square root. Uh, correlation, the correlation coefficient, uh, measures how closely two random variables go up and down together. If they go up and down together uh, in a perfect uh, straight line, a positively sloped straight line, then they have a correlation of one. If they go down and up, one goes down, the other goes up in a perfect straight line, then they have a correlation of uh, minus one. If knowing information about one on the average doesn't give you any information about the other, then they have zero correlation. When it comes to returns, as most of you know, uh, if you just take long positions, uh, your investments are positively correlated. Finally, uh, there's the word covariance, which is just uh, correlation. Uh, the covariance between two securities is their correlation times their standard deviation. Uh, I'm sorry the correlation between the two of them times the standard deviation of the first times the standard deviation of the second. And uh, correlate, uh, covariance doesn't have uh, much of any intuitive meaning. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, we use it in our formulas instead of covariance because things work more, uh, more simply uh, with covariance. Now, covariance is very important. Uh, let me give an extreme example. Uh, Suppose you have a security which is likely to have a high return on the average, but there's a certain chance that uh, it might uh, go belly up. Would a small investment in this security be a you know, reasonably safe bet? Well, not if the remainder of the portfolio consists of similar bets. If they all get to go broke at the same time, uh, then you do not have a diversified portfolio. 
that's a very extreme special case. Let's uh, talk about a uh, more general uh, statement of the importance of covariance. And it comes from 